This week, episode 319 of Stogie Geeks, Drew and I interview Nesta Andres Placencia, known as the largest tobacco grower in the world, with more than 6,000 employees across eight plantations. He and his family produce over 40 million cigars in four factories in Nicaragua and Honduras. Among them are the known brands of the Placencia Cosecha 146, the Placencia Reserva, Alma del Campo, Alma Forte, and Alma del Fuego. And we have v- live remote Nesta Placencia to talk all things Placencia, and they're in the middle of a big cigar festival, and we are going to talk about it. In our second Thank segment, you. it's a pleasure s- to be here. Thank you for the invitation, and and uh, and get into your re- into your listeners that we can talk a little bit about our passion and the love that we have for this beautiful industry. Absolutely. In our second segment, Drew and I feature the Placencia Reserva Original. The size I'm smoking right now is the four and three fourths by 52. Stogie Geeks episode 319 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And we- a Vintner Cigar Club located in Warwick, Rhode Island is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 319. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. I stick of the week is the Placencia Reserva Original. I just lit one up. I'm excited. And ironically, we have Drew and I have the privilege and the honor to interview Nesta. But before we introduce Nesta Placencia, how is my little brown haired boy from Texas doing? Hey, how's it going, Joe? Hey, Nestor. Hey. Uh, Going very well here in Texas. Uh, the sun's out. The sun is shining. Our new baseball park is almost done here for the Texas Rangers mm-hmm. the upcoming season. So other than that, everything's going well, and I'm ready to get this interview down the road. Nice. The buzzes are all complete with complete shoulder harness for the uh, stealing of the signals, and we're ready to go <laughs> over in Texas. I'm super excited. Uh, Drew, uh, yeah. we get to interview Nesta Andres Placencia. AKA the man that that's my uh bio of him. Uh if he needs an introduction, Nesta Placencia is responsible for over forty million cigars across four factories in Nicaragua and Honduras. Check out his blends. All you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com, click on that Placencia logo. If you want to learn more about Placencia, go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash Placencia. Nesta, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be here, man. It's a pleasure. Thank you for the invitation. I always love to talk to your listeners, man. Uh, we're in the middle of the Nicaragua Cigar Festival, so my voice is not that clear. But I, I've been enjoying cigars and Nicaraguan rum, so and having fun and having fun. That's awesome. So I get to catch you slightly tired with a slightly hoarse voice in party mode. Because I believe you have one more day of this festival. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. That's right. And uh from here, I go to the farm again, uh, but I love to show because there's nothing like a human interaction, man. And when I have the people, I have the privilege, the people to come here from 24 different countries are coming here. So we want to take advantage of that. So I invite all your listeners, if they can come to Nicaragua next year, they're going to have a lot of fun. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. You made all the legends in the cigar industry. You know, from Nicaragua, you you have the chance to visit the fields, factories, 
and, and a lot of fun. So please come if you have the chance. That's awesome. Yeah. Let, let's talk about this festival. How did this get started? What's it about? What what can the Story Geeks listener kind of expect for next year and all that stuff? Well, what's this all, festival all about? It's it's, uh, it's been a while since been doing the festival and uh, last year we couldn't we couldn't make it, but uh, we start we start uh, this year again. Uh the the thing is that we want the people know the magic where the magic start which always on the farm. You know, you have the chance to visit uh, all the all the big stars in the cigar industry from Nicaragua. You have uh, Padron, you have uh, my father, Pepin, you have uh, Oliva, you have the Hoya de Nicaragua, you have uh, J.C. Newman, you have all these guys, you know, all the great names in this industry are here. A.J. Fernandez, uh, Skip Martin, and everybody's together showing the, the beauty of this industry to the people that wants that, that, that have the chance to visit us. And uh, we, we, t- we show them the farms, we show them the factories, uh, seminars. Uh, we, today we have the people that, that visit us at the farm. We put them to grow their own tobacco plants. So they're part of that. So you, there you, you start seeing and being part of the beautiful industry. We're going to send pictures of the tobacco is growing and all the stuff. So, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Awesome, awesome. Where, where can we get uh, information on this festival? Like, it's, in, it's in the website. It's at NicaraguanCigarFestival.com. Okay. That's the only information that for the festival that you can get. Awesome. And you can track them, follow along, yeah. check out the pictures and all of that stuff too. Yeah, that sounds like that sounds like one one hell of a time. Uh, how many days is the festival in, in total? The festival is uh, five days total. The first two days are in, uh, in Managua. They went to Granada, to Mombacho Factory. It's a beautiful factory in the, in the city of Granada. And then since Wednesday, they're here uh, visiting factories and visiting farms. And, and we have a party every night, you know, a different a different team in different places. Wednesday, we have a, we have a nice party in uh, Drew State. Yesterday, we were at Pensa. Today, we're going to a Scandinavian, uh, Scandinavian cigar. And uh, we have the pleasure to have a lunch on Wednesday when they, every, everybody come. It was in our, in our farm. So... Uh, it's been it's been amazing. It's been amazing days. And also having my dad here, having my my family, my cousins, and uh, my brother is in Miami right now taking care of you guys. Receive cigars in the US, mm-hmm. uh, so he couldn't make it this year. Uh, but we had a, we had an amazing time. That's awesome. Yeah, that that's, <clears throat> that sounds like one hell of a time um, there, and probably one hell of a like a educational component for you know someone to go to and and. And to experience, got to put that on on our bucket list, Drew, for sure. Is it January of every year? Uh, of every year? It's a January January every year awesome. because in January is a, a lot of tobaccos on the fields. Yep. So it's the best time for to, for visit the farms, and uh, and the weather is amazing. You know, and and you can and you can get away for the cold winter in the northern U.S. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Do you have any plans on coming to the northern U.S. at least in the summer? At least in the summer, for sure, for sure. I have plans to go. Uh, once the tobacco growing uh, ends, they might have a more free time to visit, uh, to visit our consumers, our customers, which is always a pleasure to, to be together. Because I want, I want the people to understand why we do things. And uh, we've been 154 years in this beautiful industry. I'm the fifth generation. We talked about this the last time. But I always want to say it because I feel it is just the beginning, even though we're 154 years. But everything that we have learned and everything that we keep learning is for you guys, for your listener, for, your, for our final consumer that can have the best side possible with our cigars. It's our goal. It's our mission. It's a reason to exist. So, so I always want to be close uh, to the final consumer, listening to them, what we can learn, what, what else can we do, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. And also, like... I want to take a second to kind of reflect on the Nicaraguan cigar, right? And because, you know, um, I've been in the industry for a little bit over 24 years in different capacities. I used to own a cigar shop here in the Providence Metro. I distributed, uh, I was a broker for a cigar for a very short time and realized that uh, life on the road is not for me, even though I like a lot of country songs that reflect that Uh, (laughs) there. Um... 
I also think it was a timing thing in a, a brand thing with my experience. I think that if if I had, uh, I think it's very tough for a broker to go out and to get that other support from all the vendors because of what the broker's position is. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't want to take away from the interview with you with that, but I just want to set that there. Uh, okay. I've 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 been uh, 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 here on Stoy Geeks since uh, January second of twenty seventeen. Uh, I've learned so much about the industry, uh, interviewing different people and all of that stuff. But from a business perspective, right? I mean, I don't want to take away from Honduras. I love the Nicaraguan Honduran um, yes. combo for for my palate, right? Okay. I don't want to take away from from uh, cigars that are done in Dominica and all that, right? But you know, we had a cigar boom in the '90s, and we almost have a cigar boom when it comes to Nicaraguan cigars. Like, if we were to do a pie chart of which regions that the cigars come from, every year, year after year, the Nicaraguan portion gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which yes. obviously, in a, from a business perspective, the other regions are getting smaller and smaller. I, I really truly believe, and I've said this on multiple shows, so you know, uh, it's it's not that I'm I'm I'm, I'm brown nosing you, right? As we say here in the states, it, it, it it's it's one of those things where it's like I truly believe that we consumers seek the creativity of the Nicaraguan flavor profile that comes from all of these cigars can you can you take a couple seconds or a couple minutes or whatever it takes to kind of elaborate for not only for myself and drew but for the stogie geeks listener like what makes nicaraguan tobacco so special and why do us consumers kind of keep seeking re regardless of brand right doesn't yeah. that you know regardless of brand we always go back to a boutique most of the boutiques now are coming from um from that have a nicaraguan component to it mm -hmm. most mm -hmm. of the successful ones i can say that most of the successful ones that get bigger and bigger and bigger kind of stay there like what is so unique about nicaraguan tobacco that allows you obviously the creator of of such wonderful sticks to kind of like either experiment or go through or what goes through your mind versus other tobacco from other regions? Man, that's, that's an amazing question. And for me, being as a Nicaraguan, I was born here in Nicaragua, here in Esteli. I'm, I'm from Esteli. Mm -hmm. I was born here in Esteli. So it's a topic that I love to talk about it. Let's do it. I don't said that we are blessed. We are blessed because we have the soil. The soil is, um, for me, in farming, I'm a, and I'm an agronomist, I'm a farmer. That's, that's what I consider myself. Uh, the quality of our soil, it's amazing. The richness, the, the, the nutrients that it has, it's a damn nutrients. We have different regions where we can create blends. You have Esteli, we have uh, Jalapa, we have Condega, we have Ometepe where we create amazing blends out of those four main regions. And then we have a small regions here and there. Uh, also an amazing tobacco. So for thing, for me to have that kind of soil, is it's so important. It's a, it's a blessing because we don't have to do anything to, to have that. We have the microclimate also, temperature, humidity, uh, dead, dead in line, numbers of hours of darkness, and the microclimate, that's a, another thing that we're blessed. But the most important factor that I consider is the know-how. Is the know-how with the tobacco plant. Is the knowing when the, when that leaf has to be harvested. You know, you have to know. You have to see the leaves. You have to have seen the signs of that leaf. Is telling me, "Hey, I'm ready to be harvested." So you have to know when to harvest. When you're going to print that tobacco in the cutie barn? How many days? Temperature, humidity, air movement within the cutie barn. Then you're hanging down those leaves and put into the fermentation. You see that tobacco, that temperature rises. You flip the pilon, you start smelling. You start seeing the changes, all the sugars getting out, all the ammonia uh, goes out. And then you age the tobacco, and then you play with all these leaves and all the stuff. So, you know, that's, that's, that's really a blessing. And also having the people, passionate people, you know, business people, tobacco people that come here, and see that, and them, and them having the, the 
the people who really work in the field, who really work in the factories and make this beautiful stick, I think there's still a lot of room for Nicaraguan cigars in the market. Yes, and, and, and that's kind of alluding to my point is that if we were to go back to that business pie chart and, you know, if we were in a boardroom kind of uh-huh. talking from a business perspective and market share, right, the, the creativity element, in, in my opinion, just seems to go so much further when you add a Nicaraguan component versus, and, 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 and again, there are other cigars from other regions that are really fascinating and yes. stay in that region yeah. and do yeah. very well. But they kind of are almost kind of like singular within the place. Like, for example, if, if, if you're going to get like an Arturo Fluente, you expect it to be, it's consistent, whatever, yeah. whether you go from Opus yeah, X or, or, the, or, the, or, the, or the short story, you know, whichever, it's consistent, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the other blends, anything that, you know, the, uh, from, from Romeo and Juliet, right? It, you know, they come down, it's consistent, except for when yeah. they experimented with, with the Nicaragua. They, that wasn't so hot, right, for them, right? But yeah. I honestly think it was a branding thing. I think everyone had in their mind what a Romeo and Juliet is supposed to taste like, right, because they've been mm-hmm. around for generations, and then they try it and they don't like it. I bet you if we took the band off of it, gave it a regular name, it might have done a little bit better, my opinion, right? Okay. Right? So, like, to, when 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 you're on the field and you want to try something different, uh, you've come up with the Elmo del Campo, Elmo Forte, the Elmo del Fuego, right? You come up with yeah. something different. In your mind, if you could kind of elaborate, like like what are you searching for, for the for the most enjoyable uh, sense to, to to kind of pique our senses? Yeah, I I always work I always work with the quality of the soil. You know, uh, we add a lot of organic material. We create our own vermicompost and add a lot of organic material because I believe that the better nutrient plan we have, the richer the, the, the flavors are. So we still experimented. There's a lot of new products that come, uh, organically made products that I'm a big fan of, uh, organic agriculture. And, uh, and uh, we start, we experiment with that. Uh, the quality of the water that you irrigated is so important also. Different varieties that we're working that we're working with, you know, we crossbred it. Uh, uh, different different uh, characteristics that I want for this variety and the other variety. We put it together. We wait ten years, ten generations to see if that works or didn't work. So there's a lot of creativity in that, and also and also in, in the blending process. You know, uh, the example of the Alma uh, Alma del Fuego that we go with the Ometepe big time. Uh, we get bold because we use uh, a lot of Ometepe in that blend. And we haven't tried that before because Ometepe was a very dominant. And, uh, but we see it with, when we age the tobacco for longer, then we can start playing and adding more, more percentage of that. And then we came with a beautiful blend. I'm, I'm in love with that blend. So, yeah. so you know, so, so it's, it's, it's try and error. I love what I love about this, uh, this industry that's connect, connect you with nature, connect you with a product that comes for nature, we taste in the, the terror for that specific region. And there's any artificial intelligence that can give you that, you know? And that brings people together. And that connection with nature and with humanity, that's what I love about this industry. I, think, I truly believe that we make people's life better with cigars. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Drew, do you have a question? No, I would, I would, yeah, my, my question was like, when you know, when I, when I smoked this, you know, your line, there's definitely a consistency there. There's never really a drop or, uh, you know, through the Vitolas, through the different Vitolas. I mean, you get a little bit of a stronger sense of the wrapper, binder, things of that nature as you change through them, but not, but the consistency of the base uh, with your palate. I mean, it really stands true. Thank, uh, thank you very the other, much. Yeah. And the other part to that is like, you know, when I'm, when I'm reading like your wrapper, your binder and your filler, you know, I'm, I'm also thinking, wow, you know, down the road when you do like anniversary, uh, cigars and things of that nature you definitely can lateral and and kind of still uh uh experiment with a different binder or wrapper so that it really leaves it open but at the same point right now it's perfect so why mess with success thank you thank you but we have a lot of things uh in the pipeline ready yeah uh, well yeah. not ready but we, we're going when the, when the time is right we're gonna we're gonna release it but you yeah. know it's a it's i always want to say it is a teamwork this is not a one-man show. 
this is a lot of people show. And we try to have our people happy. We try to invest in our people's seminars. We have daycares where we take, take care of their kids while they're working and all this stuff. So I think that's, especially in cigars, you know how many, how many steps are involved in a cigar and how many people are involved in that? Imagine the right. people are passionate and they want to do the right job. Man, the possibilities yeah. are endless and the, and, the, and the quality and the proud. I, I have in, the, in a board in the Galera where we produce the cigars, the ratings that we have. But I also have the, the, the testimonials of the final consumer. And I say yeah. in a big board, I say, thank you, guys. I want to thank my bunch and my rollers, the people in the factory, the people in the farms, the people in the fermentation, that because of them, we're having this success. Mm. Uh, to reflect a little bit more on the palate, to kind of p- piggyback on, on Drew's question, um, as I'm going through this series of picking a stick of the week uh, from your line, uh, there, uh, we started uh, in November. We did the uh, Cosecha 146. I had the Robusto Gordo. Um, then we uh, pivoted in January 10th to the Elma del Campo. Um, and then last week I did the Elma del Fuego. Uh, right now, currently, I'm doing the Reserva Original. One of the characteristics, and I've mentioned this, if you go back week last, all, all those dates, I've mentioned this. One of the characteristics that I notice when I'm having a Placencia cigar is the smoke content on your palate. In other mm-hmm. words, it's like it really kind of has that, like, I, I, I mean, t- Tobacconist University calls it umami, right? So it's like, it's like you kind of have that, that savory taste that, lingers in your palate and 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 one of the characteristics i noticed um not so much with the elma del fuego but especially with the cosecha and the elma del campo and a little bit of this but but the other ones were kind of up there in the smokiness that that's a characteristic of there how do you how how do you like get that because some cigars even from the region don't really have that. Like, I have to almost work the retro hail in order to yeah. get that. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. So does my yeah. question, does that make sense? Like, 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 uh, is, is that like intentionally like a characteristic that you choose or, or what you are know, you going for? It's, it's, it's the way that we're making the cigars. Actually, we want, we want the cigars to be filled with tobacco. And I think that's one of, one of the reasons that you can have all that smoke, you know, even though it's not that when we have a loose cigar, you have a, a uh, hot smog that is a little bit bothering, bothering you a little bit, but we try to have a very dense and the way that mm-hmm. we bunch, you know, that you can have a very dense cigar and still have a very good draw. I think one mm-hmm. is one of the reasons to that. And, and the way that we, that we like the, the, the people to try the tobacco and, uh, and we grow a hundred percent of the leaves that are on the placenta and any cigar that have the placencia brand on it, we grow the tobacco hundred percent ourselves. So that's, you know, that's also, we know exactly which field that come, you know, what farm, uh, the fermentation process that it took, the temperature that took in the pilon, uh, time of aging, everything. We know everything about those leaves. So it is a characteristic. So you, you, because I did receive emails. By the way, Stogie Geeks, you can email me at Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. I do receive emails and they were like, you know, when you were reviewing the Placencia, you actually mentioned smoke content. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I'm like, it, it's crazy. Like, it, thank it's, you, it's, thank it's, you. it's so, so, so I'm not like off my rocker. That is an intentional characteristic. That is, that, well, that, you know, it's always, we, we want to have that. It's the first time that somebody told me that. But, you know, but it's a, it's a good, we're going to talk to my guys about it, you know, but we, we do it, yeah. we try to do it in, in a very dense way with a, with a, with a very good draw. That's, yeah. that's, that's what we try to do intentionally. Wait a minute. Out of all the cigar podcasts that are out there, no one's ever mentioned, like, the, that as a characteristic? <laughs> like, like, Drew, back me up if I'm wrong, or, oh, I'm sorry, back me up if you don't disagree. Like, that is, like, if I could pick, like, three characteristics to judge the Placencia line, that okay. would be either number two or one. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, the first time, right? For me, that was the first time. There you go, right? The real deal, right? Stogie yeah, Geeks. You guys are the real deal. <laughs> the, re- the real deal show right here. We could change it to, to, to the real deal. So, no, I, I don't know. It's like, it's like I, I, I did, if I were to judge from, a, you know how, like, sometimes 
uh, they they review it on uh, complexity, flavor, and balance. Right? Those are the those are the right. basic. You know, uh, if if I'm gonna start to review cigars, I'm gonna start with complexity, flavor, and balance, right? So, 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 and and maybe construction, because yeah. some of them you have to give a report on constructions, yeah. others you don't, right? And, yeah. and, and 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 a characteristic of of the Pacencia line is that they're very dense when you hold them. Yep. They, they're not loose at all. And I know that specifically because I'm a twirler, right? So I'm not really keen on a lot of box presses. Just I smoke box presses, but it makes it hard to twirl, right? When you twirl with a box press, it goes bump, bump, bump. Sometimes it goes on the floor, right? <laughs> but, but, right. but like, I'm a twirler. So, like, I noticed that, okay, if I were to pick a characteristic, right, and Drew, come up with, with yours as well because I'm going to ask you yeah. so you can report back to uh, Nesta. Like, I would sure. go dense to the touch, I would go incredibly uh, smoky on the palate, palate that lingers, and in no particular order of these, I would definitely certainly say complexity, especially in that Elma del Fuego, like real complexity, that retrohale, when you retrohale that stick, so like, right. like Drew, do you have any more characteristics that you want to add, like, just so Nesta can kind of elaborate on them? <clears throat> so the other characteristic that I, that I like is just the the, uh, the it's just the consistent of the of the of the bunch and the and, and the way it burns. I mean, it just burns very nice and evenly throughout the cigar. And so uh, as you as you go through it, uh, and it just allows you to to really enjoy that smoke and introduce yourself into certain notes and flavors throughout that cigar because it's it's a well intentioned meaning cigar as you smoke through his line. Uh, and so with that. Uh, like you said, uh, just the construction of it itself is is definitely on point. Yeah, and they are consistent, Nesta. Like very. they are very consistent. Whenever I travel, usually to South Florida, I always get a lot of Placentias because here in the Northeast, they're a little sparse, right? Okay. But 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 I go down to South Florida. I'm like, oh yeah, like you know, I went down there in September. I I reported back to Story Geeks. I did it from Havana Republic Cigars over in Fort Lauderdale. First thing I grabbed was the cosecha, right? I was Thank like, you. I was like, I was like, oh, you know, and and you know, and 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 you know, I, I'm I'm kind of like, wow, and 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 as I'm smoking it, doing Stogie Geeks and Drews in Texas, and we're reporting back here to Rhode Island and doing that, I just I'm just like, wow, like you, they're so different, you know. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's also knowing knowing the kind of uh, fertilization you use. In order to have a very good combustible uh, characteristics in the tobacco, I think that yeah. also helps. And um, you know, as being a being a farmer and being the grower of the tobacco, you know, that's that's something that you can know exactly what you have in your cigar. So that's I yeah. think that's a great, that's a great uh, thing to have. Very yeah. happy for that. Yep, yep. It's very they're very consistent. Um, so the question I had another question real quick. So yeah. hey, Nestor, on the on, when you came up when this cigar was coming into fruition. Um, I was reading a little story about how it was the 146 crop of 2011. So, can you take us through that a little bit? Just kind of like let us know how do you, how how does that come about? That we is it just yeah, something you were yeah, you're, very good question. We've been growing we've been growing tobacco for 154 years. Yeah, every year, despite uh, moving from country to country because of the revolution, because we my family lost everything twice. So. Even though they lost everything, they lost farm, they go to a new, a new country, start growing tobacco the same year. At the beginning, they, they, they came. Even we have hurricanes, we have uh, blue mold, we, have, we, we never have lost a, a crop. So the mm -hmm. year 2011, 2012, that was a very good crop. We put some tobacco aside in Honduras and Nicaragua because that, that's a blend. Yeah. You know, that's a blend yeah. of, uh, uh, of Honduran and Nicaraguan tobacco. And you know, so we have, we have this amazing tobacco. Let's do something about it. And let's do it in Honduras because I want to have that Hamastran tobacco that I, I, for me is one of the best tobacco that we have in Honduras. So, so let's let's do that, and we came with the blend, and that people love the blend, and I was very happy for that. So, so that's yeah. that was the reason for naming Cosecha 146, which is yeah. named as a 146 crop from the Placencia family since 1865. Mm. Wow, that's awesome. So, what do you do? So, you 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 lot that tobacco, right? Yes. You put it in a warehouse. You let it sit. Uh -huh. And then, and, and then, I'm assuming yeah. you say, okay, we're gonna do something special with this. And then, at the time, because it has a, 
years to age, you have yes. some time and patience to put it into whatever image or whatever yes. images yeah. in your palette. Or, and, or, try, yep. and try the right combination for different tobaccos and this and there. And uh, it's amazing what time goes to tobacco. In order to have a yes. consist consistent product, you need to have a lot of inventory of tobacco, you know, in order so yeah. you can take, you know, you have this tobacco for this field, but you have to taste uh, bell by bell in order to have the same, the same profile taste. But in order to have that, you have to have a good amount of tobacco. And we're blessed because we, we grow a lot of tobacco. And uh, out of that uh, big amount, we, we, we pick, you know, we, we're willing to pick and, and, and taste and being able to have a consistency product in the market. Mm -hmm. I ask this question of a lot of owners of, of, of cigar shops and whether which plantation it's on or whichever. Do you go through a panel to when you come to that aha moment of this is going to be the, for example, this is the stick and the blend that we're going to use for this product, right? Uh -huh. So this is what we're going to use for the cosecha. This is what we're going to use for the uh, Reserve Original, Elma del Campo, Elma Fuerte, whatever you're doing. Uh -huh. How, uh, do you have like a panel of testers, or are, are you are you the man when it comes like it's what's in your head? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's always it's always a teamwork, but mostly mostly for people from the factories. Uh, we try an error, you know, we have an idea. I want this taste profile so we know which products, which cigars, with, oh, I mean, which farm can give you this profile. We start trying an error with a, with a proportion of the cigar here and there. And then if uh, I, I like it, but other people don't like it, seeing that I have to be a little bit sweeter over here or a little bit more complex over there. So we keep trying and we keep trying until we have a, a consensus. Here at the factory, and you know, I always use my team in Nicaragua, and I always use my team in Honduras as well. So we we can we can feedback each other because I believe that I had an amazing team and I had to use them in everything that we do. And also is, and also we have friends in the states that we ship cigars and they can and we can have some feedback from there and stuff like that. But it's mostly the team at the factories. Okay, because 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 that was my next question, right? Like like wow, yeah. like like it's exclusive to to the uh, chain of command, whoever, however your chain of command works, this guy is next to, to move up for whatever his or her responsibilities are and all of that stuff. So you have a panel within your corporation, within yes. your company, and then yes. you go out to the outside as well yeah, to, to, to get, actually to do get, that. To, yeah. to make sure that what we think people will might like it, you know? Okay, so, so, yeah. so, so my next question... Right, but so, it's mostly what we what we believe is 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 gonna be we, because we want to love all the blends that we do it for ourselves. Yep. It's a hundred percent up uh, up to us. Yep, you know. So so that's that's depends on us. A hundred percent. So my next question is, where do I send my resume to to become a taste tester? <laughs> Man, and you it's not told me you're it, in the cigar industry so you're higher uh, all right because it's, it's not because i want free cigars i i truly <laughs> I, I i i i i truly would love to sit on a panel and and a lot because i'm assuming that the outside people that you trust and use uh have to elaborate why right why they yes. say what they say you have a process right you know yeah. as opposed to your employee you can go up to them you can you can speak to them face to face yeah. and because mm -hmm. you know you have access to them every day right yeah. so so um if you ever need a, a panel if if, if you want to uh do that for anything new and elaborate why i would i would love a chance thank you very much to, to that add much that sure. yeah to add that to my <laughs> to my what i've done in the in the industry i think it would be super cool and you know who who better to do it for than than something coming from your factory? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I imagine I imagine all your all your employees. I mean, they have the same passion you do because I you you to have that consistent and quality there, and to see that the, you know the 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 sticks that are coming out you know with with the Placencia family name on it, it's it's it just speaks volume because the passion. Uh, I mean, they 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 seem like they have you know they have a, a, a an open door policy with you to to let you know what they what they think what they feel they touch the leaves they roll the leaves they they go out there and 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 and, and nurture the plants uh, the tobacco as it's out there in the field 
100%, and so, man. so, so that, they know more. Man. They know more than I. Oh 100%, yeah, a hundred percent, man. They're they're with the leaves all day, uh, with the tobacco, you know, all day long. So I have to use that, you know. Yeah. And we have an open door uh, policy. Every idea, yeah. everything that you think that we can improve, we listen to them. Uh, I, I, I went to a business seminar, and uh, mm-hmm. they asked me, "You have to see." In your business, what is your X factor, they call it. And yeah. your X factor is why you can differentiate yourself from the rest. You know, what, what is, the, what is the, the, the X thing that you have? And I was thinking about it and I said, you know, our X factor 100% is our people. Because yeah. I, the, the passion that they show me, the thing that I have learned from them. Uh, since I started, I started at a very young age. Uh, I have people that are still with us since, since I was three years old. Uh, so imagine all the, all the knowledge that these people have, and then I bring I bring all the stuff that I learn over there and as a teamwork and my and the wisdom of my dad always, you know, is involved yeah. in everything yep. that we do, and I I love my dad and respect him big time. Mm. So, oh, you yeah. know, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's amazing. It's a teamwork. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and to see that your brothers are coming in as well. I mean, I I read Gustavo's now. You know, doing your accounting and uh, Jose Luis. You know, your younger brother. I I yes. see that he's going to be working on some blends aside. You know, yeah. aside yeah, with yeah. you. So all, all that's exciting. And we have everybody involved. Uh, Jose Luis is uh, is in charge of the distribution company in in Miami. So nice. that's why is uh, make sure that we have more cigars in in Northeast in Rhode Island. And uh, so this is going to be his job right now. That's and, our guy. Uh, so so <laughs> it's, it's, it's nice. And my sister, I have my sister. She's a dentist. Yeah. But now she's, th- she's taking care of all the daycare centers that we have mm. for, our, for our guys. We have like uh, 250 kids in a, wow. in a Montessori-style education for the, for the sons and daughters of our, of our collaborators. So it's a big responsibility that she has. Oh, that's oh, yeah. awesome. So that they'll be making sure. Now, uh, in the school for the children, are you teaching them, like, do they have the option to uh, learn other stuff, or are you teaching them all stuff so that you guys can get bigger and bigger? That's a good question. That's a very good question. <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> actually, yeah. actually, I'm teaching them. What I, what I learned from them is that they became lawyers, that they can become doctors, that can become uh, business people, entrepreneurs, that they can hire more people, and you can grow the economy of these cities and these countries. You know, that's what oh, I want from them. I want them to be my supervisors. I want them to be my engineers. I want them to be, you know, my accountant, uh, CFOs, because I, I, I can, I can find people to work on the fields and stuff like that. But I want them to have a better standard of living. Nice. That's so awesome to hear. That is. That is really awesome to hear. Um, well, that's that's like our kids, right, Joe? I mean, your kid and my grandkid. We want them to have a be, you know a better uh, process. Uh, you know, we had to swim to to find everything, and they, and they should swim as well. But I know with my grandson, I look at him, I'm like, yeah, that guy's gonna be my lawyer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just so you know, Nesta, Andrew's grandson is 18 months, and my son, my firstborn son, is 17 months. Wow! Yeah. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, yeah. That's a so, life, life so, changing. Huh? Yeah, but life he changing. he gets the luxury of sending them home at night. I gotta, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, you know. But yeah, it's so it's so cool to watch the development of a child. You can learn, oh. you can learn so much about yourself, and you can learn so yeah. much uh, uh, if you just slow down to to their level. You know, yeah, it's like- a big big responsibility that we have, and. Uh, we oh, have yeah. to make a better world for these. For yeah, these, I think all people. politicians uh, should babysit uh, twice a week consistently <laughs> for two years. I, I think they would learn, they would come out that, and they would make different rules. Idea. Well, because then they can see like who it's really going to affect, right? Of what yes. they're of what 100%. they're doing. But uh, but we 100%. don't do a political thing on this show, <laughs> except for when we talk uh, PCA. Other than that, other than that, other than that move on, Joe. Move it, on, Joe. It, it doesn't get too it doesn't get too <laughs> political, right? Um, I have a question about uh, each individual blend uh, that you've created, right? Uh, some okay. some um, some owners uh, blend it around a particular size, right? Huh. So, so as you go through your lineup here at Placencia, like, do you start with the same size for each one? 
or because obviously you make it available in a bunch of different sizes to appear to a bunch of different people, get mm-hmm. shelf space, all of that stuff. Uh, take us through that line so that the Story Geeks listener, when they can go to storygeeks.com and click on the Placencia banner and find a retailer near you, um, take us through like which size you were intended that you think would be like the first one to try or which size if you want to go out publicly and just say, hey, I built it around this stick. And then I built the other ones around. Yeah, most most of the time, what we do, we come at, uh, as a total size, okay. six by fifty-two. For me, that's the right. The fifty-two ring gauge is have the right uh, diameter where you can play with the leaves and all the stuff. So we start always with a six by fifty-two, and from then we go and, and try and see the proportion for when we when we move for for one line to to another line. Right now, I'm smoking the panetella with the alma with the alma del fuego. And I, I love I love this size. Uh, I think uh, it's not that intimidated when you have a rigger being gauge. So with people that are, you know, when they see a darker wrapper, they can be hey, that, with a darker wrapper with a bigger ring gauge, they can be intimidated. He's not used to uh, uh, full flavor cigars. So you know, so we we move in there to to see which audience we want to reach. We always always want to start with a a total size of fifty two ring gauge. Um, I can tell you from my experience here at Stogie Geeks that that answer is, um, is your answer. There is no right or wrong answer, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, that answer is, um, most of them start to focus on the flavor surrounding around the wrapper because the, whenever I ask them this, right, because surrounding the wrapper uh, and correct me if I'm wrong or, or if I've been no, told no. wrong, like the mo- of- most of the flavor of what's going to linger on your palate comes from the wrapper. So they kind of not, not really shy away from the really, really big, big ring gauges. But when they're creating a blend, they kind of go, you know, maybe Toro. But most of the answers I get are kind of like R- either a Robusto or a Torpedo, you know? Yeah, no, there's no, there's no right and wrong answer. You know, everybody has their own which is which is which is great you know but we always try uh that and it, it for us i think it's, it's, it's working and, and and i like that size i like the that uh 50 52 54 ring gauge see i because of the complexity of your line and i'm so familiar with it because we're doing these series of 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 reviews in mm-hmm. the second half of our show i honestly thought your answer was was going to be different i honestly thought um, your answer was going to be for this, we chose this size for this, we chose, and then you built it around. So, um, super glad that, that, you know, I, uh, I, I don't know everything, right. <laughs> 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 you know, super glad about that. Yeah. Um, Drew, do you have a question? No, I was going to say, you know, that's, that, that just shows right there is consistency and how he's building that cell cigar throughout the line, uh, that they're offering on their, uh, facing. So, uh, I'll tell you, my first Elma Forte I had was, and it was just because of the cool factor that it's a, it's a uh, hexagonal, and yeah, I remember when I got that cigar, I was like, oh, this is this is bitching. I mean, just you <laughs> that's know, that's a good just, thing, Nesta. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that, that was <laughs> yeah, that was a bitching stick. I mean, just the way it looked. Uh, of course, you know, I, I go through a little. Uh, uh, repertoire when I when I when I look at a cigar I look at the label just kind of go through the get acquainted with the cigar do uh do you know decide what cut I'm gonna go with it and then from there I just start to do my my my, my you know my uh, process uh, in introducing myself to the cigar at the, at the light um, but yeah just 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 the way it looked it, it got me there and then from there I just started to go in, I you know, went to the Toro and then Robusto and then back to the Solomon and then I that's that and that's what I've been doing so. Uh, you know, since I, I got introduced to your line. I'm, I'm very proud of that shape, the, the hexagonal shape. Uh, oh, yeah. I, was, I was reading about biomimicry, which is the science that mimic nature, that you yeah. can find uh, 3.8 billion years has been with us, nature. So there's a lot of things that we can learn from nature. And I was oh, yeah. reading about the hexagon shape is a perfect shape in nature. And I say, hey, wait a minute, let's, let's try to do something with that shape in cigars. So we start to see try and error, we create a mold, then the cigars start to get rounded again. So now I, I, I create some mold where I age the cigars on the mold for a month, and then it dried out. And then uh, when, when we get out of the mold, so it will uh, we'll stay the shape with the hexagon. So I'm very loved. I love that shape. I'm very proud of that shape. Mm. 
That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I have a question that I, I, I have to ask. Um, if any one of our listeners were to Google you and your factory and what you do, you roll complete lines of other uh, blends and brands, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, um, do you have like a section in the plantation that's yours? And then everything's everyone else. So, you know, I, I don't want to get into you roll for this one, that one, do that. I don't want to get into that. That That's that's someone else's business model. That's their business with you. I want to talk about Placencia. But I am curious. I am. I'm very curious about, like, you know, do you have, like, a brick wall around your stuff? And then, you know, uh, you know, you, you measured the sun when you were creating the plants to make sure that, that you, you – know, <laughs> How does that yeah. work? Uh, being, a, being a farmer, you can do a lot of stuff, but but we have great tobacco for everybody. You know, we we grow we grow good amounts, so there's there's a lot of great tobacco for everybody. Well, what we do different for our cigars is that I add organically grown tobacco to all the lines that we have. For example, the mm-hmm. Placenza Reserva Original is 100% grown organically grown tobacco. That's 100%. But I use uh, some of that organically grown tobacco and put it in all the blends that I have in order to have something different. And, 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 and we use, you know, some uh, smaller version of the Criollo that we develop ourselves. That's a proprietary for the Placencia lines and that kind of stuff in order to have some different than the cigar that we make for ourselves than the cigar that we make for other people. And we want, and we want to make the best cigar for, all the, for the partners that have been trusting their brand for us uh, to many, many years. We always want to do their best job for them. But the blending process, what we do for them, you know, is their decision which blend are the one that they're gonna that they wanna that they're gonna put in the market. And in, in our case, it's our decision to make to see which blends are gonna put in the market. Yeah. yeah. You know, I just yeah, I was gonna say I I smoke one of those uh recently and we got those total flames M seventy two in with with you know from uh I believe it's a uh tobacco from uh Russia. Yes. And uh, yeah, and I saw that you were you were the blend uh, that it was sent to you from there, and then from there you guys blended it uh, tobacco uh-huh. for the wrapper binder filler. Man, that was that was a very nice cigar, and I thought, wow, you know, that yes. you can definitely you can definitely tell your signature in that cigar, uh, you being the blender in that. Yeah, thank you. That that's uh, very nice people, uh, very nice people, and doing a very good job with the uh, with the marketing. Oh, yeah. uh, life uh, life short, do it hard. They do it. So there's no brick wall around your stuff or it's roped off? No, no, no. <laughs> not really. Not really like, uh, yeah, I mean, we have, you we know. have good stuff. We have good stuff that, that is, that, 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 well, that's good to hear. Uh, that, that's good to hear. Uh, so how's... Remember, remember that we supply also a lot of tobacco for all the people that we don't make the cigars, but we supply the tobacco. For right. Them. So we want, to do, we want to do the best job possible. Right. So I, you, would, I, I, you would cure uh, the tobacco and then ship it. Excuse me. You would cure the to- you would cure the tobacco, ship it to them, and then they do what they want to do with with the yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and sometimes yeah. I, for example, filler is 100 percent fermented and ready to use. They can yeah. do whatever they want with that tobacco when we ship it. But for a wrapper and binder, they they do their the finishing and the fermentation. But uh, you know, it's uh, that's the beauty. So you can have different tastes. Otherwise, all cigars will be very similar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah, I just saw I just saw a video about uh, Rocky Patel put out a couple months ago when he was down at your factory and he was talking about his twenty thousand pills that you know that you were storing for him, and yeah, that was pretty that was pretty interesting when I saw that and I shared that with a lot of my friends and they were like, wow, that's pretty cool, you know this, you know that you know that the, they know that the quality and the consistency and for both you as the grower and and for you know the cigar manufacturer or name brand to actually yeah. you know come together and you know that you got a great 100 percent uh uh quality uh coming through in their smokes yeah that's and that's beautiful partnership man rocky is um, it's an amazing guy it's a great friend that we've been doing business together for many many years yeah he, he's an amazing story i remember him uh from when i had my shop when his first go around with uh indian tobacco you know what yeah. i mean and yeah. then and then i remember <laughs> him having rocky um, patel and i remember and i tell people this story all the time when Rocky, after Indian Tobacco and, and Rocky came back as Rocky Patel, uh, he had a lot going against him, right? Uh, you know, uh, he wasn't of descent. That's his words, not mine. You know, uh-huh. from the family in there. And then he came out with this decade, right? Mm-hmm. And I yeah. remember there's only one time in history 
where we as a retail cigar shop could only sell two at once and you had to prepay for them because of the wow. demand for the decade. The only one time that's ever happened in my experience wow, wow. was was the Opus X, obviously, right? When yeah, Opus yeah. X came out, I mean, we, we were pre-selling Opus X for 22 that, that was the street price, right? $22 yeah. you paid now, and we gave it to you like six months later as wow. a cigar shop. It was, it, it, yeah, we were in the Northeast, and I'm sure it was a little bit of readily available in South Florida at the time. Uh, internet wasn't, you know, we were still on dial up then and, you know, we, we weren't re communicating other than phone or fax machine, right? And stuff mm -hmm. like that to, with, with there. So it was, it, it, when Rocky came out that decade, it was like, man, it was like, and then it just, it just went from there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's an amazing blend. I, I love that blend. Awesome. I love that. So before we talk about the, f before we end the interview with the future of Placentia and what we can hopefully expect or teaser. Yeah. Uh, I have one other question. I'm sure each individual case is different, so you can kind of give me a general answer uh, there. When you're rolling for other people's um, blends, is the taste process still the – I'm sorry. Is the testing and taste process still the same where you engage in your employees plus them in their panel, or is it – is it do you as as you know owner face of the company uh -huh. you know it's it's your family project right do you mm -hmm. let them go a little bit more than if it was on your line no they uh, we we make the blend and uh actually they make they make the blend they choose the blend if they want our help you know we help we put yeah. the tobaccos and then they start it so it's their palate is whatever they think we 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 said you know do i think this and there that they listen to us and all stuff and because we want that every, every cigar that comes out of the factory is good, you know. Uh, but it's yeah. mostly their, their blending process is their responsibility to pick the blend and always. And we help whatever we can. Yep. And I'm not looking for an answer, but I'm sure some customers are easier than others. And we'll... <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm sure some, some are easier than others. Awesome. So, Nesta, what can we expect coming up? It's 2020. Um, 2020 is a lot of crazy. There's a lot of crazy news going on around, especially surrounding around PCA. We're gonna leave that there. Uh, you know, what can we expect for 2020 from the we, we're, gonna have, we're gonna have some interesting stuff coming in 2020. You know, we have uh, we had a good tobacco that is ready to be released, so we're gonna have something interesting for this year. Any names for me? Or no, not yet. Not yet, not yet, but uh, <laughs> you will know, you will know. May, right? I'll know, I'll know a month before, before the big show, right? <laughs> like everyone else, get in line, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, you can't blame me for asking. Man, never, never. <laughs> you know what's, you know, the other thing that's cool about, like I said, is, is the lineage. I mean, you guys have been doing this for 150 years, and I can see right now with, uh, and, and by all means, not that you're going to be checking out soon or anything, you still got another 50 years to go. Uh, but to see your like your little brother come in and then just to see the younger generation that's up and coming in in the cigar industry, I think they'll be our, our, you know, our, our, you know, definitely look to the future, but uh, you know, for them to come up with blends and things of like that, nature, it's just very exciting to hear that. I, it's here. super exciting with the ideas. Uh, they, yeah. They've been raised in a completely different area than us. And so yes. they came and they bring in new ideas, new designs, new concept which is so amazing and it's yeah. uh the beauty of the beauty of this industry what i love about it is you never get bored mm. you keep learning and learning and learning every crop is a new lesson you know the market is moving so you have to see how how you can how you can feel those the, the demands that are on the market with the knowledge with the little knowledge that you have and keep learning with an open yeah. mind and what what's what's out there that's awesome yeah definitely to stay ahead of the trend so yeah i, I see that definitely so I, I'm excited to see what what what's going to come about after the uh, after all these shows business gets out of the way. <laughs> we're going to have this. <laughs> Either way, we're going to smoke cigars regardless of a show. Yeah. Yes. You know, no, I'm just I'm, I'm just talking about a lot, a lot of the well, a lot of a lot of the uh, cigars that are coming out for 2020. I mean, they normally come out at after the shows. And so, yeah, it's just anticipation. So definitely, you know, with our listeners and people that I talk to at my lounge, I mean, you know, they, they just can't wait to see what comes out out of Placencia next. And that's, yeah. it's, Thank it's, you it's very exciting. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. So we're trying to build uh, icons in the industry. It's, it's our goal, you know. So we don't yeah. want to be adding, adding, adding a lot of products, you know. 
We want to be slow, easy, you know, make the, every, every brand get their space and get the time to people to know it, to understand it, to learn about it. And, uh, but that's, you know, we, we, we just love what we're doing. Awesome. It's, it's a blessing. And Nesta, if you ever want a part-time job and you want to be a co-host of Stogie Geeks, I'm sure we'll have a lot of interviewees shaking in their boots. In remote, we have Nessa Placentia. Uh, uh, who? What? What? <laughs> yeah, he's going to ask you some questions. <laughs> Thank you, know, you for the offer, man. Thank the, you for the, the offer. The invitation is always open, you know? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's awesome. Stogie Geeks, if you want to see Nesta's first interview with us, because it'll be a two-part series and we are going to continue with more, all you have to do is go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash Placentia. But if you're looking for the exact episode that Nesta was first on here, it's episode 284. Nesta, I want to thank you for your time and thank My you pleasure, for, for your knowledge thank you for and thank you for spending the hour with us. I always, I'm always, always grateful for the opportunity so we can, we can tell our story to your listeners. So it's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Absolutely. It's so good to have you. Please don't be a stranger to the show. Never, never. Awesome, awesome. Stogie Geeks, when we come back, we're going to talk Sticks of the Week. Andrew and I are smoking the Placencia Reserva Original. We're going to take a quick break. 